Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This week we're taking you to Shake Shack on International Drive, live from the Bob Varley Studio. Fl- yep. <laughs> live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. You're watching The Trip. This is The Trip, episode 38 for the week of November 4th, 2015. The Trip is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation, whether it be theme parks on the West Coast, East Coast, or on the seas. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. This is The Trip, a little show about something we all love called vacation. I'm Jenny Lynn. And I'm Teresa Tess. T, whatever you want to call me. Back in the nook <laughs> is Craig Williams, our producer. Hi. Great. Okay. Craig. So, <laughs> Craig, you're looking different. Yes, I have a mustache right now. I think it's the pre-wedding look. He just I thought he thinks he looks a little nervous. Do you look a little nervous? He looks a little more cleaned up. Maybe that's it. No. He's not, I, he's not as shaggy. It's a mustache. But mustache. it's always there. No, it's not always there. You never have a naked what, upper you lip. The I'm very You've always got right scruff. No, I always do the uh, just the under beard. That's it. It's you are lie. lying. It's a lie. <laughs> you are lying. No, I do not believe this. Fair enough. Okay. Jeez, such a twin. Well, between that and my uh, deer in headlights during the intro, we have our very... What was that about? I don't know. Have you never done the intro before? You know, you would think I had, but apparently I still struggle from time to time, but... That makes me feel good, though. I, I, like I thought you might get a yeah, kick out of I like that. that happens. Putting you at ease a little bit it here. It does. It just kind of... Makes it real. Keeping it real. We're makes keeping it real. We're keeping it real here on the, it real. <laughs> on the trip. Yeah. So, oh. speaking of the trip, the show, we're doing, you know... We got some stuff we need to talk about. Oh, excuse me, my phone is this beeping. Chris Williams. This is Grace. Rick Williams. What time does Stella about Craig get out today? of school? Three fifty. Pick her up. Oh, I got to text her. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> While she's texting. Wait, I have an issue. Can you go to the issue? Bong. There's my issue. My issue is we're now in the full blown hell. Um, Holiday season. Yes. Halloween, Halloween is, past. is past. My decorations have been is coming. boxed up and put away for the next year. I did get a bag of gourds. That you had to put away. You see, my gourds are still out. My no, gourds stay out because the they're real out. for Thanksgiving. Yes. That's my homage. So that the gourds and the pumpkin moved to the kitchen area. And that is the only room that doesn't get Christmas until thanksgiving weekend the rest of the so house so you start to put up christmas before thanksgiving is over you're one of those people i never used to be i used to be thanksgiving weekend i would get everything out and the following weekend we would go get our live tree that's always been our tradition but in the past three or four years we bumped it up because i love christmas so much that plus well, it gets really busy yeah and i that's run out true. of time so now our um Christmas decorations start to go up um, this week. Oh, wow. Okay. And then um, Thanksgiving weekend, we'll, we'll get the tree and get it decorated. And I have ready. always been hardcore. You do not decorate before Christmas, before Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving needs to be acknowledged. However, you know, with this last year being my first year of, you know, being single. Yeah. And um, makes a difference. It was really hard for me to do it all by myself. So now I'm kind of being won over to the idea of, all right, maybe it's okay to give it a little bit of a head start just because I need more time. Honestly, I've always done it all by myself, except for the tree. The tree, the children help, and then after they go to bed, I redo it the way I want it. But, <laughs> but the decorations, they just want to sit and watch. Nobody really wants to help me. When they were little, they did. Yeah. But it's also the, now the season of the Christmas movies and Christmas mm-hmm. programming, which I absolutely love. And I'm, I'm ready for that. And Christmas music, I've already started listening to some. Not all the time. Just on my way to work, on the way home, I don't yet. That'll happen later. <laughs> but I don't know. I just love Christmas. And I love the fact that, you know what, maybe I decorate earlier because there's no Christmas weather here in Florida. 
That is true. To we are sitting at prompt me. Well, how many degrees is it today? It's fairly ridiculous right now. Normally, it's a little bit chilly here by by Halloween. We're sitting at eighty eight degrees here in the beginning See, of November. That's just not right. That's it's not, just right. not right. I, I so, mean, even as a Floridian, native Floridian, that's not right. So you have a big Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. Um, really? Yeah. I mean, obviously, Christmas is cold presents is it and all that. Of the but food. It's because of the people. Oh, I love wow. the idea of everybody getting together, taking a whole day to just kind of catch up, watch a parade together, or a football game, or you know, hang out and just kind of be. See, ours has turned into the day of throwing each other under the bus with grandma. <laughs> it's, you know, like the year Max got his tattoo. Grandma was really fussing at Stella about something, and I felt the need, and I knew Max would, could take it. So I screamed out, Max has a tattoo! And <laughs> she swiveled her head around, and that was, you know, Stella was saved. Now the year I got my tattoo, he paid me back when he was fuss- <laughs> she was fussing him about his earlobe gauges, and, you know, he screams out from across the room, Mom has a tattoo! <laughs> you know, so I don't know who's going under the bus this year. It might be my husband. I don't know. It's always something to look forward to. So I will steer clear of your house on Thanksgiving. <laughs> so. You will be thrown under the bus to save myself or my youngest. Everybody else is on their own. Yeah. They're old enough to handle it. How about you, Craig? You got your Christmas decorations out? Oh, yeah. No, I, of course. Uh, I guess looping it into a travel-oriented uh, discussion, it's basically because the holidays become so travel heavy, especially yeah. with uh, people in our company that I have to get everything up early. Otherwise, I don't get to enjoy it. Like with the uh, Christmas, uh, December season alone, uh, I'm gone for, I think, two thirds of December yeah. with travel. So I need to enjoy it at some point. So I have to enjoy it in November. Uh, but even on top of that, it's I, I can't remember who I was discussing it with. I think it was over at the Osborne Lights. But Christmas in Florida is so unique. Well, I guess anywhere in the South that people ha- are used to the warmer weather. Um, up home, that's whenever things shift into like the 60-degree the weather. That's mm-hmm. whenever you start getting in that fall spirit. And then all of a sudden, it takes that dramatic turn to every day. It's like 40 yeah. or maybe it's 50 the frost on a good comes day. comes and it's, yeah. Exactly. And that's that's that shift. It's like, okay, it's, it's Thanksgiving and that means Christmas is coming mm-hmm. right around the corner as well too. But down here, you don't have that shift. So the only way to get into it for me here is by blasting that Christmas music early and yeah. getting my decorations out right away. Because then by the time, you know, the third week of December rolls around, I'm slightly in the mood, but I still just want it to be cold and I snow do. and I want Santa to come and crank Santa the air just down doesn't a little come. bit in the house. Makes do sense. they still make that canned snow that used to put on windows? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I would think I'm going to drift up my windows so it looks like it might be chilly outside. <laughs> cat will probably eat it i don't know i don't know but i just i don't know i'm in the mood and i want to like you said we're all you're traveling people are traveling in it's just you got to get get it when you can and the fact that i don't work at home anymore when i worked at home i could enjoy it all day now i just enjoy it when i get home mm-hmm. so i want it there and ready for me when i get home december 1st yeah it all work makes sense say, oh look the tree's up and yeah you know. We've got a lot of stuff coming up for the holiday season here in Orlando. The, yeah. uh, all the attractions, everything kind of kicks into a uh, shifts into a different gear, and it's a lot of fun. But for this week, we went to Shake Shack on International Drive. That was not decorated for any special holidays, but still, uh, you know, a good experience. And you think you might be ready to get in some trip talk? Yep. Bring it on. Trip talk. That's right. <laughs> Remind me, I need to fix those so they're longer. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. I was talking about Shake Shack. Shake Shack. Why don't you start us off? I don't want to. Okay. Because I don't have good things to say. Back to you, JL. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's... Um, all right. So this is a chain, correct? It is, yep. All right. I did not know that because I don't... I'm, you know, as a rule, I don't eat out a lot. I'm only eating out with you people and on the occasion, and I usually frequent the same places over and over. So this was my first time at Shake Shack. You had been before? Mm-hmm. Craig, you had been before? 
Multiple times. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. So there must be something good in there that y'all like if you're going back, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. There's been a shake. There was a Shake Shack that opened up, I guess, a year or two ago out in Winter Park. And then this one opened up on International Drive just this past August in the iDrive 360 complex. And I remember when that happened, everybody, you know, oh, wow, Shake Shack's coming. And the excitement about it and me thinking, what's the big deal? It's a burger and milkshake joint. It's, you know, not a unique concept. You know. No, it's not. But, um, but yeah, I have been there a couple times. I wandered in there uh, one evening when I was uh, with my boyfriend. We were at I Drive 360 and um, went in there for a burger one evening and pretty much changed my thoughts on, on hamburgers, honestly. I just had a great experience. See, I'm in the complete opposite boat. Oh, I'm I, there too. I yeah. keep going back to try to like it. And every time I'm pretty much disappointed. <gasps> this past experience understand. was the best one that I've had. Okay. All right, well, let's get into talking about this past experience then. Okay, let's do because we were. It'll be my only experience there. So let's. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, so we were on I Drive to do a, a different attraction, one that we'll be going over next week, the Escape Game, and you know we had to get some lunch afterwards, and Shake Shack was just a. Uh, little little walk away oh. so we wandered in and um it's open just so you guys know for those that are curious open sunday through thursdays 11 a.m to 11 p.m fridays and saturdays 11 a.m to 12 a.m their big thing is you know they just they use a lot of very fresh ingredients their meats are no hormones no antibiotics and um non-gmo type of ingredients uh their frozen custard spun daily right there at the shack so i guess let's get into it okay let's start off by the way it looks can we start with that absolutely in my mind when you said let's go to shake shack i had a visual in my mind of more of a a burger joint with um Shake Shack makes me think of the 50s. Makes me think of, I thought there were going to be some colors involved, and I thought there was going to be some fun music involved, and I thought it was just going to be a cool little burger joint or something like from Pleasantville. That's kind of how I, with only with color. You were expecting a diner. I was kind of expecting a diner, like a little, yeah, something along that lines. And we walked in, and it was just not... It it's, looks a bit sterile. It's a bit sterile. It's a lot of stainless steel, wood, more... more All natural uh, colors. Very, very natural, natural looking. looking. Yeah. And I think the reason for that is it goes along with kind of their ideology that they built the business on. They are very, very big on things like, you know, environmentalism, supporting... Um, like I said, the whole like natural right. food ingredients and, um, you know, they... they they're pet friendly and there's, they sell dog biscuits or dog food. Yeah, right? they, there's do actually dog food on the menu. Um, it's all kind of more of that uh, very natural. I, I want to say hippie, but it's not hippie when you walk in. But it's that very kind of back to earthy. Earthy. There's a good word for yeah. it. It's it's kind of a very earthy ideology that you one percent of. Their sales goes to charity. All of their clothing that they sell is like made from organic cotton. You know this type. And that's of cool. Stuff. I'm on board yeah. with all of that. But throw me some color. Throw me a little bit of. You know, you're gonna sell shakes in a shack, and you're gonna have some good burgers to go along with it. Then I need some. I need a little bit more something to look at. Well, yeah. I'm gonna go off on a tangent here because you mentioned the dog aspect as someone who tries to take their dog out to eat as many places as possible it's nice whenever a place has something like this however there's one big issue with it is that you know a lot of times i'm at home all day by myself while kylie's at work uh so let's say i wouldn't wanted to go here for lunch and i wanted to buy myself something and then also go in and get something for elvis well i can't because even though they sell the dog food, Elvis can't. You're not allowed to take the dogs inside, so you know they do always. All Shake Shacks have some sort of patio seating, so you can bring. But what are you uh, gonna do with Elvis pet. while you're in there ordering? Exactly, and that's where my that's where my issue comes into the place is that they don't. You know, it's great that they offer this, but if you're by yourself, it's 
not. So you're just alienating every single person that owns a pet that wants to go out with them. And you say pet like there's other things other than dogs, and there are, and there was no cat food on that menu. <laughs> there's discrimi- pet discrimination. Well, Klaus likes to eat out, too. So, okay. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> he has a leash. <laughs> all right. So the atmosphere, like you described, is very earthy. It's all, it's woods, it's, it's stainless steel, more type of like the natural materials type look to it. Um, parking. Parking is the same as it is when you go to Sea Life Aquarium, the, the Orlando Eye. Eye. Yeah. It's that same parking garage that... That is awesome. That works. It works. It's free. It's awesome. Yep. It's right there. Yep. Literally, you come out and there is Shake Shack. hmm So, yeah, you couldn't get better parking than that. hmm So I'm on board with that. I'm good with that. It just needs more color. I'm sorry. It just, that just, that, that tainted my whole... You're not into the wood and stainless steel. No, I like that. I love that look. But not for... It doesn't go with the name to me. And I know that's a trivial thing, but still. Uh, I I totally get it, though, in a way. I don't know the whole timeline on when Shake Shack first opened or when Chipotle opened up. But in terms of their interiors, they really do kind of have that same exact feel to them. Mm -hmm. And it is because that we want you to feel like it's all natural and everything's like that. Um, you know, it's it's a weird idea to get at with Chipotle, but they also advertise a little bit more about how, you know, with their animal products they use and all that. With Shake Shack, it's still, you don't think of burgers as a potential healthy thing or hot no. dogs because, well, right. they're not. So that's where <laughs> it kind of crosses for me. But, you know, I would sit in there for, an, well, hell, we did sit in there for about an hour and a half just yeah. enjoying the atmosphere. So I think it is very relaxing. I like there's TVs showing sports. There's some of the games inside. So yeah, that was one of the co- things that I thought was cool about. It. I actually enjoy that atmosphere. I um, I felt pretty relaxed. I like the. I like that it feels a little bit more. I'm gonna say upscale than you know walking into a McDonald's where you're you know oh well, yeah bombarded well, they have with a bocce ball and then they had that other little. Shuffleboard. There was like a hand shuffleboard, Mm -hmm. um, the bocce ball. I thought that was cool because it's that. In my opinion, that makes it a little bit more kid friendly. Actually, the the parents can sit around and you know enjoy their meal. One of the things on their menu is wine and beer. So if people are wanting to sit around and enjoy those beverages, kids can still kind of occupy themselves. Um, well, going off on that too, uh, not to jump ahead, but then again, we didn't drink any beer, so I'll base it on my last experiences there. Uh, They actually. Shake Shack originated up in New York, uh, and so uh, Brooklyn Beer makes an exclusive Shake Shack beer for them, uh, as well as I believe their house wine is specially made for them yes, as well. True. So um, it actually, I do enjoy that, that you can come here and have something exclusive to this restaurant alone and not just get you know, anything else out there. And then Abita makes a, a house root beer for them, too, so... Uh, in terms of some of the specialty beverage options. Their bottled really nice water place. was their own private label, too. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. is. Yep. It all, it all is. Um, I, I think it's a kind of a nice setup. And I love that, um, you know, there's different seating as well. They've, they have, like, high high tops. They had uh, booths. But something that I really loved um, is that patio area. There's patio seating. And in the evenings, it's particularly pretty it's strung with little lights overhead you've got fans blowing on you in case you're hot out there it is near the bocce ball um court i spent an evening there with my parents and my kids when my last time my parents came in and it's just a really nice relaxing place to sit these got got these like little picnic tables and i don't know it was it was uh it was a cool it was a cool feeling to it um we briefly mentioned kid friendly before this place is very kid friendly mm-hmm. they have a kids menu um honey boo boo was in there when we were in there <laughs> <It> sure, <laughs> sure someone was. that looks like her <laughs> <laughs> it's always so fun to go out with Teresa. Okay. brunette honey boo boo and her family <laughs> the were dining. john benet ramsey slash honey boo boo uh cross <laughs> kid that came in and Teresa telling me the stories. Well, she walked right by her table. Did you not see her? I didn't know. You were looking at me because I was looking past you and I saw her come around she the corner. She saw the ghost of John And Benet. I'm going, oh my lord. It's, you know, because she had the, oh, she had, she had the whole look and the walk 
it threw me. I'm going, oh, good God. No, I just saw Jean Benet walk by. It's just... uh, the walk was the extraordinary part you of it. You saw it, did you not? At yes. first, I mean, well, J.O. is waiting patiently to try to get her bathroom pictures. Uh, Teresa and I were just standing out there kind of, you know, we were giving her her backstory like she deserves. And so <laughs> watching her walk, like she's got to be wearing high heels. So then I kind of did a little <laughs> went like, to look. sneak up and she wasn't. She was wearing Converse. So clear... I mean, if she wasn't doing that, she must have been wearing like constricting underwear that was. She had a thong on like something because yeah. that walk. She had the walk down, the beauty pageant walk. Is yes, that okay. it was like I have confidence. Look at me, vote for me, walk. <laughs> and she was like six. If she was six, baby thong, baby thong, and her whole family was there. But what, what freaked me out the most? This has nothing to do with the review. Was they took up two booths. It was Jean Bonnet, ba- Honey Boo Boo, and some other woman not sitting directly across from each other in the booth. And then Honey Boo Boo Jean Bonnet's brother and parents were in the booth behind her, handing her food to her. It was bizarre. Waiting on her. Waiting on her. It was... And the whole family could have fit in one booth. Uh, yes. They weren't, like, they weren't overly large no, people. They were it huge, wasn't possible. It was huge booths. I mean... And somehow I really missed all of this. <laughs> You're in You're the bathroom. Your extended bathroom break. <laughs> and we got to stand there and just backstory the crap out of it. And it was so much fun. So anyway, and okay, back to the restaurant. That's all very supportive to the family-friendly atmosphere. <laughs> Entire families come, although they don't, although they split up when they go. Um, it's all the glitter and a hairspray she had on it. Well, in spite of uh, Honey Boo Boo John Bonet, it's a very casual atmosphere. It Not is. everyone that walks in is like a beauty queen. No. Just this little girl. It was girl. very casual. It was just walk it's in as jeans, you are. It's jeans, it's sneakers, yeah. it's t-shirts. Flip-flops, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I yep. agree on that one. Yeah. Uh, Wi-Fi friendly, not so much. Really? Mm-mm. I didn't try. No. No, I mean, I was still getting my signal, but there's no Wi-Fi. So for all of you that that's important to. Just it's all the stainless that. steel walls. Let's talk about the menu because that's ultimately what it comes down to, right? All right. So the menu is up on a big board when you walk in, like a big wall of items. Um, it was very impressive, I thought, when we first walked in. Uh, burgers, um, they used their little name and everything. You know, the Shack Burger, the Smoke Shack, the Shack Stack, um, Shack Chicago Dog. Oh, ha ha, get that one right. <laughs> you know what I read the other day? All hot dogs, and probably not these because these are all 100% natural, no hormones, no antibiotics. All hot dogs carry 2% human DNA. And I don't know what the heck they're getting it from or where it's coming from, but I read that the other day. It's I haven't eaten a hot dog since. Well, no, it's like peanut butter and everything else. They're allowed to contain traces of hair, rat hair, stuff like that. So all food is allowed to have uh, a certain amount. Well, this that- article was about hot dogs and... Two percent's a big hunk of DNA, and where's it coming from? And I don't. Anyway. I mean, that's, I just got I just got a wave of sickness. Okay, that's all food though. So if I know, you're going to make that, I try not that, to think about it. Just like yeah. the little things eating away at my eyelashes, I try not to think about those too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's a chicken dog, a hot dog. There's the crinkle cut fries, which I found pretty average. They were a bag of crinkle cuts out of the freezer. In their own special grease. They had cheese fries. You had the cheese fries. Did you like them? The cheese looked the weird color to me. Okay. Well, I mean, let's go over the menu a little okay, more. Okay, then okay. we'll get into our personal um, meals. Frozen custards, shakes, cups, cones, concretes. And a concrete is when they mix in other things, right? Mm-hmm. It's a blizzard. It's a blizzard. Okay. For those of us in the real world. And they have all kinds of different sauces you could put on there. Then they have uh, shake-made lemonade, organic fresh brewed iced tea, 50-50, which is half and half. Fountains. They have Dr. Pepper, so that gives them a little point for me. Um, root beer, apple juice, bottled water, beer, wine, and the Poochie Wolf dog stuff. Bag of bones. Doggy bag of five shake burger dog biscuits. Yeah. Sha- I also wanted to, on the menu, they Shack have... Certain items designated as vegetarian items, so this is vegetarian friendly, and they also are able to accommodate um, gluten free uh, diets. You that's not designated on the menu, you do have to speak to somebody who works there, but they are able to um, provide you with gluten free meals as well. So they kind of get a thumbs up in the special diets category. It doesn't look like they accommodate everything, but they can accommodate some things. That's cool. 
Burgers, like you said, are 100% all natural Angus. No hormones, no antibiotics. That's good. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yep. Um, The other ingredients, like their potato rolls, are non-GMO and... um, and Regular like, sugar, no corn syrup, and the frozen custard. That's their big thing, trying not to use artificial ingredients. And, I mean, I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. I'm wondering if we went to the same restaurant. Did we eat the same food? Because I, I think that that is what has made the difference in how I feel about this food. I think it in, you know, tastes okay, pretty Okay, how you darn feel good. about the food. Yeah. How you mentally feel about the food. No, like Not, obviously. How about my how you taste, taste it by my taste, taste too? buds factor into how I feel about the food. Okay. But don't you think going into it you mentally prepared your see I I didn't know it was all organic and all and all that until we got there. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you already knew that. Mm-hmm. So you went in knowing that this food was going to be better for you. Right? No, that's not true. When I went with you, that was the case, but not the first time that I walked in. When okay. I, the first time I walked in was very spontaneous. I hadn't had a plan to be there. I was just in the area, and then okay, well, I guess we'll try this out. Okay, all right. So we, we want to talk about the food now. Yeah, go ahead. Let's okay. start off with what you had. So okay, one more second. Okay. Say something else. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about something else. The bathrooms are fine. <laughs> you were in there long enough. I was in there out. a very long time, which we'll get we'll oh, get no, into that tell us after later. we Please talk tell about us the why. meal. Okay, sorry can about call, that. Can we move on now? Okay. Yeah, we can. The problem was JL didn't give a picture of her food, just yours and mine, so I had to work quick oh, to okay. figure so that out. Okay, so what I had, oh, I think, sorry. is not I thought not you took a picture of my food, didn't I you? did, but I didn't include it in all the pictures you gave me. I did now. Don't worry. What okay. I had is actually not on the menu. It it, it was a, um, I can't think what it was called. It was a special that they were It was having. a special, but it was um, the, and you could get a single or a double, and I got a double. It was a double cheeseburger, and it had uh, onions on it, like sautéed onions. I thought it was, was it caramelized onions? Well, caramelized sautéed, I would say that would be the okay. same thing for me. Okay, so there it is, and I got the plain crinkle fries. I got the double burger. You can obviously tell it's a fresh-made burger. You can tell that it's not formed in a machine because of its irregular size and its tendency to fall apart when you eat it so it seemed like a real homemade burger to me which i liked uh it was a little on the greasy side for me i don't i'm i like my burgers a little bit drier than that i found it and you could see the grease on it Mm -hmm. well that's a pretty big problem though with really thin burgers like that because they're just constantly cooking up in their grease you have to basically burn it in order to get all of that grease off off, yeah you don't want a burnt burger at the same time actually i like burnt burgers i like my burgers well done they they cook all theirs to medium unless you choose otherwise and i chose just to let it come as come out as it did it was okay the fries to me were unspectacular just like i make at home no big difference um the shake, I got a shake. I got a chocolate shake with added malt, so I actually turned it into a malt, um, which I like. I love chocolate malts. And for the price, which was five seventy five for the um, shake with the malt added, it was a tiny, tiny little shake. I when I saw when we were standing there waiting. And they give you buzzers when you go up and you pay, and then you go wait and come get your food. I thought everybody, why these people? These shakes must not be good because everybody's getting smalls. You know what's the deal? And then I realized that was the size everybody's came in. And I was not that I could have drank anymore. I couldn't even finish the one I had, but it just seemed like a tiny little shake. God, I would this. say in general the portions are on the smaller side. Those are well, not large burgers. You're not what, going to Hardee's with your, you know. Big, which goes huge with it's Carl probably Jr. a true serving. It's it's right. not supersizing, which is right. good. It's an it's an um it's an adequate it's an adequate portion and probably a portion that is uh, more on the healthier side right. as far as oh, what you what, should what be saying, eating. Yeah. But you know, as Americans, where we're used to everything being supersized, especially when it comes to burger joints, sometimes I I do feel like um, that that would probably be the main thing that i would take issue with here is that the portions are smaller not just the shakes the burgers seem like they're smaller um the fries the amount of fries that they give Mm -hmm. you kind of seem a bit on the smaller side Um, my meal came to 22 dollars and something 
Right. For, and to, for what you're paying, it feels like the portions are right smaller than what they should be. I, I think actually the fry portions are large because they're almost meant to share with someone else. Uh, the, that's why the fries Maybe don't I'm come right away with there. Eater. Yeah, no, the, the, <laughs> fry, the fries were definitely on the larger side. I mean, if you cooked a bag of it yourself, you would realize that that was about three or four portions of what you're supposed to eat. And well, yeah. that's why we... Uh, that's why we get Say the it? way we what? are. What are you saying? That's Hey, I'm right in the same boat. <laughs> I <got that. laughs> what are you saying over there? No, I, um, I understand. And I, as I thought about it later, I'm thinking, okay, so those were more probably on target proportions that we're supposed to be eating. But it just kind of shocked me for the price. Mm-hmm. And I realize, but then you go back to the healthier, better for you ingredients are always more costly. Yes. Right. So, you know. That's, live with it. Yeah, that's where it's coming from. You're going to pay live for the with quality. It. Yeah. So what about what you had? Well, let me hand that over here a second. Because I've had a couple things when I've gone there. And um, the first two times I went to Shake ba- Shack, I had the basic Shack burger. That's their standard cheeseburger topped with lettuce, tomato, and what they call uh, their Shack sauce. And I love this burger. I love this burger. I could probably eat two of them. Um Again, because the the portions are smaller than what you're used to, you know, your Whoppers or Double Pounders or whatever. Um, But this time when we went, I decided to Quarter pounder, not a double pounder. What? Okay. Yeah, you can tell that I (laughs) (laughs) frequent these places often. I don't know what... Anyway, yes. Okay, quarter pounder and... What are... There's a double something, isn't there? It was a Whopper and a... I don't know. I don't eat... I don't... It, going back to me just for a second, I don't eat burgers out in restaurants usually because I don't like to get some funky meat in my mouth in a hamburger mm-hmm. that has got something in it, like a gristly or something weird. Okay. So I'm very picky about my burgers. The fact that this was all natural, I knew that hopefully it would be a little bit more like what I would cook at home. Mm-hmm. And it did, it did come across... Other than the grease part, I liked it. So... But I, no, I don't do Whoppers and all of that. I've okay. never, I haven't done that in 30 years. Well, I obviously don't have my uh, burger terms correct. But anyway, Shack Burger is just, you know, their very basic standard cheeseburger. And the two times that I've had them, I've loved them. I feel like these burgers are just have so much more flavor from the meat, from the cheese that they're using, down to the, the tomatoes that are on the, um, and the rolls that they're using. I, I just feel like I've... It's, I have not, not that I'm a burger connoisseur, but it shocked me how much flavor this burger had. And I've had that two times. This last time we went, I got something different because I decided to go outside the box. I got the Smoke Shack, which is a cheeseburger topped with all natural applewood smoked bacon, chopped cherry pepper, and shack sauce. That was not such a great experience. Um... I, again, I loved the burger. The, the meat, the cheese, uh, the bacon, all of that was great. I was not prepared for what chopped cherry peppers They're spicy. would do. Yeah, well, I would guess... Would do. <laughs> Hence why she disappeared into the bathroom. <laughs> I'm normally very careful with, you know, I don't want any onions and, and this kind of stuff. <laughs> I'd never had chopped cherry peppers, and I actually, when I ordered... <laughs> Peruvian puff pepper. pepper. <laughs> when I ordered the Smoke Shack, um, I... She's smoking. By the time we actually got the burger, I had kind of forgotten that peppers were supposed to be on the burger, and I thought that they were tomatoes, and so it was just a little bit shocking. There, there was so much... Um, yeah, they were hot, you know. You, you took a couple bites, and you were quiet, and you were eating, and all the... All of a sudden, you went, whoa, I just, this is a little spicy. She starts <laughs> drinking more beverages the whole time. Yeah, and it just, and it didn't really get better. It, it intensified as we went along to the point that I actually couldn't finish with those peppers on the burger. I had to eventually scrape them off because I wasn't, it couldn't go any further. Um, but <laughs> it was, it was a good burger. I think the fault lies with me and my, um, sensitivities to those types right. of foods and the reactions that I have from them, um, such as having to make that bathroom trip. Okay, the crinkle cut fries. You think there's nothing special about them. I love these fries. Well, they're it's good. That's why I buy them at home, so too. So good. And they have them, 
Greased Sa- up. Salted to perfection. Well, they're salted. They're yeah. so good that I didn't really resort to s- dipping them in the ketchup except for, you know, a couple times. And when I can eat a French fry that I don't need ketchup for, that is a really great fry, in my opinion. Okay. Um, well, they were good. I'm not saying they weren't good. Oh, they're just, I love them. You know, I'm having them tonight at home from the freezer. So. <laughs> um, and then uh, for the drink, I'd gotten... They, I had their feature drink of the week. It was a ginger cranberry lemonade, and it was awesome. I think that's one of the cool things about this place is there. It's a burger joint, but they've got things that are a little bit, a little bit different. So even just in their their drink, it's not your standard sodas across the board. They've got lemonade, organic, fresh brewed tea, um, Arnold Palmer's the tea and lemonade. Then they've got your um, regular soda, root beer, organic apple juice, bottled water, and then, as Craig mentioned, the beers and the wines. Yeah, and even beyond that, with the actual shake flavors, they have their standard chocolate, vanilla, they have a coffee one, a black and white cookie one, um, just a whole variety. But then each week, they have a special flavor that you can do for shakes or for the uh, the custard or anything like that. So the week we went, it was Shackenstein because they were still in their Halloween mode. But, you know, they, they go uh, seasonal with it, too. they didn't explain what too. Shackenstein was, did they? It did. It was on the menu. It oh, was, was just it? it was basically like vanilla with uh, chocolate chunks in it as well, too. So that's why I didn't go for it, uh, even despite my love of Frankenstein. But, you know, they did pumpkin milkshakes. They'll do the peppermint milkshakes whenever it uh, gets closer to Christmas here. So you have to do commend them on that for trying to oh, change like things that, up yeah. and give them a little variety. We'll yeah. give them that. But I loved my meal. Um, I will admit it was you know a little bit greasy i don't mind that quite as much um sometimes i'm okay with a little grease but like i said i like my burgers a little drier i want the moist but not dripping and mine actually was a little dripping was it yeah okay now i base all of my burgers now on chicken burger out of canada and this is not a chicken burger but it's good i mean it was all right you don't like chicken burger no oh i love chicken burger not the chicken one, but the hamburger. Yeah, the even the hamburger was. Oh, no, no. It was. I loved it. Their poutine was great. Oh, their poutine was good, too. So, anyway, we're not reviewing chicken burger right <laughs> now. But, no, and I like, I'm okay with steak and shake burgers. I like a thin burger versus a big, This wasn't juicy one. Well, yeah, and these weren't too fat, but no. they weren't, you know. The, this was average. They this weren't is... the slim cardboard patties, that, you know, that you get this at McDonald's either. This was like home either. cooking, kind of. Mm-hmm. That's the way I. Is it, time, it. is it time for me yet? Yeah, go, right go ahead. ahead. Well, I'm gonna. I wanted to jump in just because you brought up steak and shake. Uh, in my opinion, this sta- Shake Shack is nothing more than uh, uh, entitled uh, steak and shake, and that you know they do use higher quality ingredients. I'll say that uh, the stuff you're getting at Steak and Shake is probably that grade C that four dollar menu. Yeah, I mean it's. <laughs> but however, to me. The burger itself, uh, whenever I did have a burger at Shake Shack, it tasted the exact same as a Steak and Shake burger. And at the same time, I could also get fries right away with my meal for that $4. So right there, that ruins it for me. I don't need my meat to be beef, you know, unless you're like literally going and killing it and getting it right off the farm. Even the stuff they're serving here, it still isn't going to be the best for you. Um, So take that as it is but unlike Teresa, i do consider myself a burger connoisseur uh in that i i love burger places i love all of them uh every now and then you do have to just break down and get a big mac or a whopper yeah they're not good for you but uh they're those there's a rare treats that you can get uh but i love i love gourmet burgers uh that's Part of the reason why I love cowfish so much because their varieties they have there are crazy. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants in Orlando uh, is Teak, and they're all based on specialty burgers there. Graffiti Junction's not bad either for in that case. So I'm, I, I mean, that's the movement that's happening with burgers. Make them weirder, you know, yeah. make them big and thick too, and actual, you know, if you're going to go out, make sure you're only eating a quarter of that burger and you're taking the rest home and having it later. Um, so... I have very high standards when it comes to it. Their burgers, they're just, like I said, they're steak, they're steak and shake burgers to me. They just don't live up to it. I've had their hot dogs. Their hot dogs are amazing, but at the same time, I shouldn't have to pay $4 for a hot dog when I can go buy a pack 
for mm-hmm. less than that. I had yeah. one of their specialty hot dogs uh, that was like a Frankfurter during their Oktoberfest period, and that was actually really good as well, too. But then again, it's not something that's always on the menu, so I try not to get too excited about stuff like that. Uh, this time around, I did choose something that was on the menu all the time, and that's their vegetarian option. It is a uh, mushroom burger, and by that, it's just uh, a big portobello mushroom uh, topped with, I believe it was mozzarella cheese or provolone, one of the two, and then breaded all around and deep fried into a uh, perfect delicious cheesy and mushroom goodness and uh this was by far the best thing that i've ever gotten at uh shake shack now it was uh the mushroom i like mushrooms that aren't like overly cooked but then again still cooked a little bit so it it was cooked to the right consistency with the cheese in there it was all melted perfectly uh the fries i'm like jl i'm i like fries that whenever i'm sitting there eating them they uh, taste good with nothing on them at all unfortunately these don't really match up to that for me they're not bad but i need something a little bit on them i think with their their cheese sauce that they put on which is basically like melted american cheese but really good i think that's whenever they're the best but for me you need these ones to at least have a little bit of ketchup but in terms of how long they're fried and what their texture is they're cooked perfectly. They're not overly crispy, but they're not also soggy. So right. I got to give them credit for that. It's just they're missing just a little bit something for me. And then I also enjoyed the uh, the cranberry ginger lemonade, and mm-hmm. that was absolutely the standout part of the meal for me. That was wow. so delicious. I love ginger. I love cranberry and mixed all together. That like I would go back just to get. Stop and get a giant, drink. I will get a giant bucket of it so I have it <laughs> stored up and I can drink it throughout the entire week. Um, so overall, yeah, this this was my best experience there, but I've gotten the shakes there. I've gotten the burgers. I've gotten the hot dogs. I've gotten the fries. Overall, it's just, to me, it's not worth the price in the long run. It is way it is overpriced. Pricey. Yeah, it really, it really For is. For what it is, For it's what, pricey. Well, I think it's pricey because... Um, because you don't get as much portion wise. I love the food. You think it's probably because you don't get enough portion. Right. I think So that, they're compensating with the I think that, that the portion should be bigger for the price that you're paying. But I mean I enjoy the food. This is a place that I will probably take my children back to regularly when I'm needing to do something quick, but I, you know, I'm I'm not wanting to do McDonalds. See you I'm, know? It's, I feel like it's a bit of a step up, but I'm happy with the portion size. I don't think people need to eat any more than oh, what I they agree. give you. I'm happy with the portion size. Um, the, only, right, the shake, I, only the shake. What I'm now. saying is for the price. Yeah, for the like price. If, if I don't mind eating that portion size either, there's something that I really appreciate about that, honestly. But I would like. I'm gonna pay eight bucks. Would like for, for my it burger. not to be so expensive if if we are getting that small. I'm because I'm not walking home with yeah. leftovers from this place. I I think that's where. You know what? Yeah, the ingredients are going to cost a lot more. But at the same time, too, I think it's the whole elitist attitude of we're better than just a regular yeah. small burger. I think they're doing that because they've built that reputation that they think they're better. Then again, you have uh, Chipotle down the street who also uses all these great ingredients that are really good for you. And you can get anything there for $7 or less. And that's your whole meal yeah. right in one. So Yeah, that's the other thing that I didn't like about this place is there's no like they don't. There's no combos. I mean, you can add to it and pay for the separate items, but there's not know, a combo anywhere. There's there's no kind of prepackaged combo for you, and because of that, it, it feels like it adds up. It does, you it know, really because would, you yeah. don't want it. You're you're paying for one of their burgers what you would get for a combo at you know a regular. You would plus, and I have been to places where I would pay eight, ten, maybe fifteen dollars for a burger, but those are sit down restaurants where they're serving me yeah. well i mean this is a walk up this is fast food yeah and you have to remember this did originate in new york and new york city so up there yeah i would say oh, that this, this is, is a bargain a for what you're getting up there however it feels like the prices have also been transferred to here which you know on international drive they they can definitely get away with it winter park they can too yes, absolutely but take a shake shack and place it into podunk middle of the country in missouri or arkansas Mm -hmm. it would fail so fast because of the prices so in a tourist area yeah it it works but at the same time uh there are cheaper options out there available yeah well yeah what it does have working for it in its favorites is its location it's 
in a really fantastic location, mm-hmm. right in the middle of all the activity of iDrive. Um, and, it, you know, very accessible. Accessible to the attractions, accessible to shopping. Parking. Parking. It's all good. It's all, good. all, it's all right there. Um, Play bocce ball. What, what more could you want, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, we had... We easily spent... Well, it was an hour and a half, wasn't it? An hour and a half? Yeah, I mean, we... we well, like part of that was too. Honey Boo Boo John Bonet <laughs> and your bathroom break. <laughs> you know what? This this If you have a sensitive stomach, guys, just bypass the cherry peppers. Don't fall They're, in jail into will, the bathroom. They will not do you any favors. But, um, well, so overall, I mean, it sounds like we already know what, you know... You're you're probably going with the the frowny space spatula that we it, don't have. Well, it would be just a straight line, I think. The meh. Nothing. Yeah, meh. Nothing is screaming at me to go back because I can get any of these components somewhere else in my world closer. That's got color in the room. But if I was in the area and I needed something to eat, sure, I would go back in. Mm-hmm. If I was in that area. Yeah. Because I know it, and I know there's something in there I can eat. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of, meh. Yeah, either way. All right. What about you, Craig? Uh, for me, this is, I have friends that are obsessed with Shake Shack, and I, you know, I just don't get it. Maybe the expectations were set too high for me going into it, that it was just never able to live up to it. I would go back with friends or family if this was something that they wanted to do, because I know there are things that I can get here. However, uh, Kylie and I sitting around were never, we did the first couple times that we tried it. We said, oh, well, let's try it. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. I think after our last experience, that was the last time that we openly suggested it because we just have better burger places out there that we like that, you know, are more valuable in our opinion. So. All right. Well, I think I stand alone then because I have to give, I, I love this place. I just, I think that the food tastes amazing. I love the fact that it's, um, quick service. It is fast food, and yet you, you know, it doesn't taste like fast food. Especially when I'm over in that area on International Drive, it's just so very convenient. It's going to be a place that I do go and and take my kids back to, you know, probably pretty pretty regularly. I would put it in the same. I think when you're comparing it to to Chipotle, it's probably a good kind of um, category to kind of lump it in. That whole like counter food service but a step up and i mean i frequent chipotle every week so do you really Mm -hmm. oh chipotle addict yeah right here how many times a week do you eat out quite a lot do you yeah because i'm always on the run running somewhere so this is um this is not one that i'm going to go to not as much as chipotle because it's you know burgers but um i probably never been to chipotle Oh my gosh! Uh, How are you? Alive? <laughs> are you American? <laughs> just... I've never been. I've never been. I'm, okay. Oh my gosh! Moving on. No, this is actually I important. I, I don't know um, that we can move on. <laughs> like Chipotle is amazing because obviously it's got it's just bursting with flavor, really fresh. Uh, you know, it's have it your way right in front of you. Uh, if you get a steak bowl and just load it up, that's seven fifty after tax. You know, maybe eight. Oh, one, but you have at least two or three portions there that also taste even better as you let it sit in the fridge and let, let all the flavors mold together. Uh, their chips and their guac there. Oh, their guac is so perfect. And their lime chips. Yeah. Don't even start with the chips. guac. Um, <laughs> don't even go no. there. I know. No, how. the guac has to be talked about here because their guac is so amazing that when they are out of guac, because they don't, you know, if they can't get the fresh ingredients, they won't make it. Um, when they don't do not have guacamole there, I will. I will turn around and leave. That is how good this guacamole is. It is only second to Rocco's Tacos um, and Tequila Bar's wow. guacamole. Maybe I should try this place. It's so good. Okay. All right. Shake Shack's in that category for me, but I won't probably go to Shake Shack as much because it's not as healthy as Chipotle. But um, <clears throat> but I love it. I love it. I love that I have um, this option to take my kids to where it's it is pricier than a regular burger joint but it's still um inexpensive enough that i can take my kids there and feed my family without spending fifty dollars on a meal i know that if i was coming into the area um for a vacation this would be something that i would want to know was there 
for those times where you just you do need to grab something quick, mm-hmm. but you don't want to have, you know, um, you don't want to be eating basically crap. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, I, I this is a this is a thumbs up for me. I like their ideology. I like their focus on, um, you know, fresh ingredients, even and the the environmental, you know, them being concerned about their Im- environmental impact, you know, with the clothing that they. Uh, they sell and also the fact that they are conscious of um, special dietary needs and being able to accommodate those so those all make this a this makes Shake Shack a win for me Um, I definitely give it a smiley face Um, but I guess you know I mean I like all of those things you mentioned it's not like yeah you know down on you know you're just not as excited about it I'm just to me, it's about the food. And like I said, if I'm in the area, sure, I'll go back. But I'm not going out of my way to go back. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. So. All right, does anybody else have anything to add? No? Okay, so I think that's going to wrap that this week's show Shake up. Shack talk. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so hope you'll see Lilla. Wow, tongue tied, help me out. Go. You do it. You take it. (laughs) Wow, that's going to do it for this week on the trip. Stay tuned next week where we're going to talk about the escape game. It should be so much fun. It should be fun. Trip out. You're actually... Yep, she said trip out. That's it. I'm done. (laughs)